Unfortunately, you're not. Can you hear me? The town of Hinton respectfully acknowledges that it was located on the First Peoples traditional lands. We recognize this traditional territory to show respect and understanding to those who walked this land since time immemorial. Today, we uphold our up ongoing responsibility to work together in the spirit of the intent of the treaties with all the First Peoples and nations that call this place home. The town expresses gratitude for the opportunity to build a better community on these sacred lands for generations to come. And with that, I will call um, our standing committee meeting for October 25th in order. Council, any changes to the agenda? And Councillor Taylor. Yeah, I was hoping to make a change, uh, Madam Chair, with your permission. Based on the conversation with Jordan, I thought it was appropriate to break the in-camera topics into uh, two parts. There's uh, part one, service uh, review, in the public, which is a public discussion. I'd like to move that to section 5.3, reports from administration. And then there's also um, still a need for a closed session, which would be um, a mandatory non-disclosure section 17 for personal reasons. So those are two distinct uh, topics. The second one spawns off of the service level, sort of level review, but it's not actually part of the service level review. Yeah. So those are the changes I was hoping okay, thank you. you would approve. Thank you. Um, so administration, where would we put the one for an open session under reports or information items? Uh, to the chair, to council, I'm fine with what uh, Councillor Stewart's recommended at 5.3. Thank you. And administration, any changes on your end to the agenda? Through the chair, no changes on our end. Okay. So, Council, we do have an amended agenda. May I have a motion? And Councillor Haas. I'd like to move that we accept the agenda as amended for October 25th, 2022. And thank you, sir. All those in favor? And that's carried. And we do have a people here with minute for council. Are you here? Yes. yes. Okay, so what I need you to do is let us know your name and also understand that this is not a two way conversation between you and, and um, council. Okay. okay, and if anything does arise, you do have questions, you can have administration um, take care of them and I'll make you. Okay, okay, thank you. So go ahead. Okay, I'm Andrew Risco. Spelled B-O-R-Y-S-K-O. And yeah, my concern is with the streets in town, a couple of streets, particularly Artisty Avenue and McLeod Avenue. You have these people come in from BC that spread gravel on the, on the cracks in the road. They did a terrible job. Okay, the, the road is like a washboard now. What they should have done is packed it and made it level. If you drive through Edson on the highway, they did the same job and it's as smooth as can be. Okay, that is, and I'm really frustrated we're driving on those roads. Like I say, it's like driving on a washboard. And I'm sure you people have driven on it. And I don't understand why no one seems to, to care about it. You did it a prior year, the year prior to that, you had these people back. And they've never done a decent job. And yet they seem to be called back. Is there no one in the area that can do it? You have to get someone from BC to do it. Like that's that's my concern. With that matter, the other the other concern I have is with the campground. You know, for a town our size, we have a, a campground that's totally outdated. You go in there and it, it's 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 archaic. There's no power. There's nothing. It's not looked after properly. The tables are in bad shape. It, it's just it's just messy. Like we've gone through, like we did a lot of camping. And we've gone into a town with 500 people that has a beautiful campground. And they, you, you feel welcome there and feel, you know, and like I say, with our situation, it's a prime location. And there's activities going on at the Rex, at the community center. People would like to camp there, but they don't want to. 
Like if a friend of mine came to town, I would recommend I say, stay out of there. You go through the KOA. You know, and say, like I'd rather say, hey, we have a nice campground, come and stay with us. That, that was that, that's my two concerns. Uh, that's all I was here for. And I wish someone, you know, I wish you would look into this, find out what you know, if you can do something with these two uh, with these two matters. Thank you. Have you left your contact information? Did you give it to again at the beginning? No, I didn't. Okay, so we'll make sure that we get contact information oh. from you um, for um, there for administration to uh, address your concern. Okay. I just want to thank you for coming in and um, stunning in front of council. It's not easy. Well, thank you for paying because you're listening to me about it. To see it, hoping something can be done about it, particularly the road system. That's, to me, it's disgusting, and I'm sure, like I say, other people driving it. I'm not the only one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, well, thank you so much. Well, and uh, this is going to be a great meeting. So, if you want to stay and uh, the rest of the little mother, I'll think of Great, thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it's, it's okay. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, um, next on the agenda is delegations and presentations. And we will, I'm thinking we're going to have to have these eight pizzas. I'll have to get you guys to oh, okay. have uh, maybe that uh, You're welcome to sit on the side if you like. Well, I don't think we're. Yeah. Okay. We'll okay. Go then. okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, our first presentation will be the uh, Civic Partnership presentation, uh, Chamber of Commerce, presented by Natalie Trotten. And it's for council that's pages three to thirteen on your agenda. Uh, good evening. Can you be there in council? Is that I'm your, sorry, no. your role this evening? Is is Deputy Mayor and Chair of this um, meeting? And that will be welcome. And we're all yours. And we're going to go to the same. Okay, thank you. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Natalie Charlton, and I'm the Executive Director at the Hitman District Chamber of Commerce. And I'm happy to present to you today a bit of an update on the partnership between the Hinton Chamber, the Town of Hinton, and the Explore Hinton Visitor Center. Um, so just to give you a little bit of an update. Um, so we were very successful in hiring four full-time staff this year. Um, we brought our staff in uh, towards the end of May and we're able to keep most of them on until the end of September. We were able to hire four local students here from Hinton. Um, the center is now not, not closed for the season, but closed for being manned by the staff. And now it is manned by the staff at the Hinton Chamber. So Natasha, who's here with me today, and myself, and we look after all the visitors that are coming into the center now. Um, yeah, and I, I might add in the summer months, we will open seven days a week and on Thursdays and Friday evenings, we stayed open until seven. Um, I'm going to share with you the 2022 figures. So keep in mind that we are, for lack of words, maybe post pandemic. So some of the figures um, are relative to what we experienced last season and now kind of coming out of the pandemic. We haven't reached um, our full capacity as to what our numbers were in, say, 2019, but there certainly has been some good growth um, over the summer. Um, some of our figures that I will share with you is that compared to 2021, visitor statistics and compared to the visitor statistics in 2022, there was a shift of 20% of the total visitors consulted who are now staying in Hinton. Um, uh, that were 
that were doing same day travel are now staying one or more nights. So that's 36% of the visitors requesting visitor services will stay in Hinton a minimum of two nights or more. So this is huge growth for us because we've, we've been working on the concept of staying another day for quite some time now. We seem to be getting some traction with that. Um, I'll kind of jump down kitty corner, um, Alberta travelers, which last year made a lot of sense that most of the visitors that we had to the center were from Alberta. The uh, restrictions were just kind of starting to get lifted. So most of the travelers kind of stayed within the area of Alberta. So 2021, we had 473 visitors. And you'll notice that this year we actually took a dip down we had 357 visitors. And I'm going to let you know that when I say visitors, these are visitor visiting parties. So visiting parties can be anywhere from 2.5 visitors per visit. So um, if we get a bus in where we've got 40 people on the bus, it goes down as one visiting party. So that's how we calculate these numbers. But you'll notice that our Canadian travelers um, in 2021 was 162 visitors, and that number has jumped up to 370 visiting parties this year. We had a lot of visitors in from Ontario and Quebec this year. So people, the, the, the visitors are getting broader now that the restrictions are easing up. Um, take note of our local visitors. Locals are eager to explore the local surroundings. In 2021, we had 253 visitors. Our visitors are up to 678. We have 678 people from Hampton and surrounding area that are coming in to use the center. So people are really um, taking advantage of what it is that we have to offer. Um, 2022 highlights. Um, we had 5,870 visitors come into the center over the last year. So, um, you know, th th those are pretty good numbers. People are really using the center. Um, uh, another highlight for us is that we distributed 14,000 visitor guides to 70 locations throughout Alberta and delivered guides bi-weekly during the peak season to all of our local hoteliers and tourism operators. And we gave paid opportunities to um, local advertisers, 34 local businesses, and listed over 200 businesses in our directory. So we've been able to really um, showcase some of our local businesses through, through the guide. Um, international travelers, um, post-pandemic regulations have eased, which has led to an increase in international visitors. In 2021, 0.5% of visitors consulted were international. This number has increased in 2022 to 6% for a total of 352 visiting parties that came into the center this summer. So, and I mean, yesterday we had visitors in from Barcelona, Spain, and um, whether or not you call Alaska international or not, we, we had them coming in, um, and this was just yesterday again. So um, community-specific information, people are really interested in the Beaver Boardwalk, uh, attractions along Highway 40, local camping, Bernard local campground, um, local restaurants, uh, disc golf rentals, and local trails for hiking and biking. Um, general visitor requests would be maps, directions, um, adventure, recreation. It's just important that you know that our people from Hinton are really um, exploring what it is that we have to offer as well. Um, let's see. Community engagement. I wanted to capture this slide just because not only do we do consults within the center with our staff, but we've taken our staff out into the community. So these are slides of our staff at the Wild Mountain Music Festival going up and down the campground and handing out visitor guides to people that are visiting the community. Um, we had them out at the Folding Mountain Brewery Summer Collective handing out some visitor guides. Um, this is a, a picture of Joan out at the Explore Hinton um, Public Market and he's going around handing out visitor guides to potential uh, visitors in the center. So it's uh, 
been great work for our staff to vote in Basley as a community. Um, this is just a slide of uh, some of the parades that the chamber puts on, the Canada Day Parade and the Snowflake Parade, um, very well attended by uh, not only folks in the community, but very well attended by our local business community and not for profit organizations. 2022 accomplishments um, continue consultations with partnership groups like ENER, um, the Hinton Green Square Group, the Valley Business District, Pathway to the Park, and the Town of Hinton. Uh, we continue to work on our brand awareness of, of Alberta and the Northern Rockies. And uh, starting with Hinton in the area, um, we want to become uh, a greater destination in the region. So we are trying to go broader. Um, again, we provided employment for four local students um, and continue to provide that training. Uh, we continue to be a central conversion hub with a place where visitors can link all attractions, retail, restaurants, and hotel stays. Um, and we've been able to lengthen the duration of stay in our area. So, you know, we, we really consider that to be a win. Some of our 2022 observations, um, ongoing statistic collections, we've been able to observe the 20% shift in visitor stays from same day travel to now more nights in Hinton. Uh, the visitor center accommodates locals and internationals alike. Um, you know, servicing with park passes, fishing licenses, free Wi-Fi, washroom facilities. People are constantly, the door is always dinging. Um, the visitor center is a point of entry for people looking to relocate to Hinton and provide a positive, positive perspective for newcomers who come in to get maps of the town and get updates on local events. Quite often, people are looking at Hinton as a a destination to relocate to, and we're able to um, showcase what, what Hinton has to offer through the opportunity to consult with them. In addition to acting as a hub for local emergencies, um, like the Chediman fires, um, the center was providing staffing when the chamber office um, is closed on the weekends and evening. Oh, pardon me, I, I lost my place there. Um, the center, um, works as a local hub for the uh, emergencies like the Chediman fires. During the fires over a two day span, we had over 160 visitors into the center. Parks Canada was in on uh, different uh, occasions, sharing maps and directions. We had many visitors that were displaced from the campgrounds and we were able to be able to, to um, allocate them out into the community. And it was a total win for the business community and businesses that were sharing with us that they had literally lineups during that time. So maybe a little bit of a silver lining to that unfortunate incident. Um, and we've been able to open our, our, our chamber offices on certain weekends where we've had community events and we brought our staff in to be able to accommodate public washrooms and those sorts of things. Uh, total supported by the town of Hinton. Um, we have two service agreements um, right now with the town of Hinton, one for $22,000 for the ongoing services provided in the off season, creating and distributing the Hinton Visitor's Guide and the two seasonal parade events. Then the $31,000 is to provide visitor services in the peak summer season employing three full-time staff and one part-time for a total of $53,000. The Hinton and District Chamber of Commerce would request that the town of Hinton consider combining the two above service agreements um, together for a total ask of 53, as opposed to breaking those out. Um, and the, this last slide is just an update on the website and our online presence. We continue to still um, share in the community um, events through Explore Hinton. Um, I'd like to thank the town of Hinton for their continued partnership and support and um, open up any questions. Like that. Thank you, Natalie, very much. Council, uh, what questions do we have? Councilor Hollis? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thanks, Natalie. Uh, always a pleasure. 
Um, I just have a couple of questions. One is on the staying another day program or idea. Are the individuals that are staying, are they planning just the one and they've been tagged on a couple more or so have they explored us said, hey, I want to stay another couple of days or are they doing their homework and saying, hey, we're going to spend two or three days in, in Hinton um, is our plan. Uh, is any any comments on that? I would say probably a combination of both. Okay. Um, you know, I think the pandemic did us a lot of favors because people started to kind of explore things that were close to their area, and a lot of people discovered Hinton and and were pleasantly pleased with what it is that we had to offer. And I mean, the biggest feedback that we got back from people is is that most of the events that they were able to attend with their family were free. So, you know, I would say that it had a lot of return clientele come back, but then, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of the work that the staff does downstairs by sharing the information that we have and being able to accommodate and book those hotel reservations and, and, and show what it is that we have to offer because a lot of them will say, you know, I, I you might as well stay, you know, like, I mean, Jasper's full, Jasper's expensive. Jasper sometimes this doesn't necessarily have the availability that we have. And, and again, for families to be able to, to be able to experience some of this stuff without having to pay a lot of money is, is really valuable. So yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but I would say a combination. Councilor um, Lamarish. I guess a, a comment I'd like to commend you on the outreach. I think that that's uh, that that's a really nice um, element of what's going on here. And just the, because um, when that was an Alberta Visitor Center, we weren't allowed to sell Hinton. We weren't allowed to tell somebody who came in, you know, you could do that in Hinton. And I just, I really um, think that that's a, that's a strong addition to, uh, to what's going on there. So thank you for your efforts. Thank you, sir. Councillor Haas. Uh, yeah, I guess I just got a question and, and maybe you can answer or not, but we did have the comments about the the campground uh, earlier in, in council. And, and I mean, I'm not in disagreement. I mean, they uh, could have an upgrade, uh, but uh, quite a large, I think, capital project. I guess my question to you, do you get any feedback at the visitor center in regards to the campground? The, is to the amenities of it and, and anything like that you could comment on that? Yeah, I would say one of the biggest comments that we hear would be the signage. Okay. People find it hard to find. You know, there there's a very small sign as you go down the East Axis Hill. Mm -hmm. If we have visitors that are coming into the center, we're able to show them on a map on how to, to get to the campground. Um, but, you know, if, if you're just trying to find it on your own, it's really not a, a, an easy place to find. And then, um, you know, and if, if I could just be so bold as to ask Natasha, what 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 are you hearing back from, from visitors on the Hinton campground that could perhaps help counsel? The gentleman in earlier was not far off on his observations, I think. We have had similar feedback. Um, visitors saying that they wouldn't recommend others to stay there just because of the, the type of people they see there. Um, and we have had in the past where we've had to call the town to look into the services to say people camping, like not in the campground, but like around the campground. So that was the one noticeable event that happened this year. Uh, other than that, I think Natalie is pretty accurate with saying signs into the campground and then also just like getting your site and figuring out how to pay for your site is a little unclear like when you're pulling into it people are unsure of how to actually register for themselves for the name. Yes sir. I mean that's excellent feedback. I mean things what I'm hearing Personally, as those are a couple of fixes that we could take a look at, definitely. I mean, signage being one of them, it, and if it's a placement of them or something like that, I mean, there's something to look at that. But, and I, I agree, I mean, managing campgrounds in a lot of places that are hard for a lot of people, but if we can make that easier, that's, that's good feedback. So, thank you. Yeah, 
Madam Thank you very much for that question. Council, any more questions? Natalie, thank you so much for your presentation. That's very good. Very good. Thank you. Um, thank you. Sorry, Madam Chair. Go ahead. Sir. Before we move on, if I have a question for administration on this. Um, so just a quick question to administration. Uh, the request to um, put the two service agreements together by the chamber, is that something we're looking at doing for this 2023 budget? Or is it something that we would look at for 2024? Any comments on that? Uh, to the chair, to Councillor Hogg, that is part and parcel why we're bringing the SPIC agency partnerships to council ahead of the budget season so that the presentations are made and we can incorporate in the 2023 budget the desires of council. Okay. So it's definitely doable for 2023 if that is the wish of council. So a motion of council or, or direction of council to amalgamate the two or consider that but like, I don't want to do that until personally until I know what you know the ranges are if it fits together with why they were split up and, and stuff like that but that would have to be a direction from us to, to look into it care that may to do uh bring that forward to the budget workshop okay. thank you thank you thank you Madam Chair. thank you sir so anything else from council on this all right so our next delegation is the um, Civic Partnership presentation from the Hinton Historical Society uh, Museum, and that will be presented by Margaret Schultz and Margaret and the rest of the board. Thank you so much for being with us today, and Joan, and we are eager to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much for that welcome, and thank you everyone for having us. Yes, I'm Margaret Schultz, the Operations and Programming Manager at the Museum, which is operated by the Hinton Historical Society. And I have some board directors with me, Terry McHugh, uh, Marge Luger, and then Joan Melvin is on the side. So jumping right in, um, many of you have heard from the Historical Society before, and you know that it was established in 2003 with the general objective of uh, preserving Hinton's Grand Trunk Pacific Railway Station. And it was, they fundraised for about 15 years to open the train station as the Northern Rockies Museum. And we exist to preserve and present Hinton's history in a way that no one else really can because we're in Hinton and we really strive for relevance and engagement in all of our historical presentations. So 2022 has been quite the year. Um, our fiscal year starts on June 1st, so a lot of this presentation pertains to that, but it's worth uh, mentioning a few things that have happened in the Calicum world as well with our successes and challenges. So the obvious challenge that many of you, uh, that everyone's been hearing a lot about lately is of course COVID-19 pandemic which blew a massive hole in all our revenue streams for the past couple of years. However, it's worth mentioning that our staff really rose to the occasion during the pandemic and produced a lot of really interesting internet um, virtual pandemic friendly programming, as well as like mail out programming boxes. So we're proud of what we're able to do within that. We also faced some major administrative challenges this year with uh, staffing and board transfers. So our previous manager resigned in October 2021, and the new manager, being myself, only started in January. So not having any overlap was a tricky thing. We were able to reopen the museum when I was only a month into the job, though. And as well, the previous manager has been really, really available. She's dropped by a few times. I have her cell phone number, and she's been very willing to help me out. We're really grateful for that. It's a similar situation with our board transfers. Our previous president moved to Saskatchewan in April, so we had to transfer our presidency and vice presidency in the middle of the year. However, uh, Lorraine, our previous president, has been very available uh, virtually. We've also had a lot of successes, and as you saw in your attached packages, uh, there's really too many to talk about in this little presentation. For programming successes, I'd like to highlight our school programming. We hopped right into school programming. We hopped right into school programming in May when we were allowed to and were able to basically host the maximum number of school programs possible for the end of the year. We also did a lot of really good drop-in tours throughout the summer. And we had a lot of partnerships this year as well. Um, two that I'm particularly proud of are is our partnership with the Hinton Municipal Library to deliver summer reading program. 
which was really rewarding for both parties. And we had a lot of kids at the museum. And then we also partnered with the Hinton Art Club to create a wonderful exhibit uh, commemorating the 50th anniversary of the club. So in your packages in the budget uh, was a summary of some of our 2022 finances. Uh, those kind of were both higher and lower than expected. We had some higher maintenance costs than we expected, but then we also had lower staffing costs because we didn't have staff for two months. And that meant that even though our revenues were lower than expected, things managed to balance out. So moving on to the next year, we're excited about it. Um, first thing first, uh, please don't quote me on anything that I'm about to say, because this is proposed programming. <laughs> It's all in the hopes and dreams stage. Um, for events, we're hoping to have simple events that reflect our staffing and volunteer capacity that line up with seasonal events. So basically, if something's coming up in the calendar, you can expect the museum to be doing something as well. Uh, for programming, we're going to continue with our school and our drop-in programming, and we're hoping to add maybe some adult programming. We also have the possibility of new programming because this year we acquired the assets of the Athabasca River Voyager Brigade Society. However, the getting on the river and doing canoe programming is a really exciting opportunity, but it's entirely dependent on getting corporate sponsorships and grant funding. So that is a proposal, but it's something that we'll be working on this winter to see if it's easy. We'd also like to work more on our exhibits and collections this winter. Just a sidebar to talk about some of the grants we were able to get this year. We're really happy with the results of um, our grant applications. One thing worth noting on this slide, though, is that our donation numbers are larger than expected because we received a very large private donation to manage the collection, the research paper collection of Tom and Austin Peterson. So that is a one time donation. Um, and it's worth noting that our figures are slightly higher because of that. You did receive the budget in your packages, and you can see that it is based on a civic agency grant of $65,000, and with that, um, our budget balances, which brings me to our request, which is for $65,000 from the town of Hinton to for our, our fiscal year of June 1st, 2022 to May 31st, 2020. And finally, thank you for your time and support. We appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you, Margaret. Council, um, questions for the museum? And Councillor Taylor. Yeah, I add up the attendance numbers, and it looked like you've had 1,200 roughly people attend if you looked at the drop ins, the school groups, and the parent talks. Um, what do you expect those numbers to do next year? What's your uh, projection? I'm afraid I don't have one off the top of my head. Those are numbers. Yeah, I, I'm afraid I, I can't say that. I would have to look at our 2019 numbers, but even that is a tricky game because as we all know, uh, visitors' behaviors have changed a lot in the past few years. So I haven't had the time to- Any ideas on what do you think will happen? I mean, I think we'll definitely get 1200 again. Um, I'm already booking school programs. Teachers are really excited about it. So our school program numbers will definitely be up. And I think we hosted something like 800 students in a year in the pre-pandemic school year. So you can count on us, you know, doubling our school program numbers. Tourist numbers will probably remain relatively stable because we had a COVID free summer, right? So I wouldn't expect them to rise or lower significantly. Great, thanks. Thank you, sir, very much. So seeing, um, and Councillor Stasha. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in reading through the background information that uh, that you guys present to the council, there's reference in there a few in a few places to an archives and uh, were you just related to an archivist. So I'm just wondering how does that work in relation to the archives at the Hinton Municipal Library? And um, if you could just talk a little bit more about the uh, archives, I'm interested because it does have a pretty significant impact um, to your budget, and it seems like it's a it's a duplication of services with the uh, archives that are already existing in, in the community um okay so background on the archive project is that tom peterson local historian donated his research papers to us i learned about these when i arrived in january um and as you can imagine i was a little um 
um, I don't know what the word is. I have a lot going on in my head. And when I heard about these, I thought, okay, if you want to do something with these, I should immediately. Um, I heard about these when I first arrived, and the deadline for Young Canada Works of Building Careers and Heritage Grants is January 31st. So one of the first things I did on the job was fill out that grant. So I say that to explain that this has been kind of an ongoing thing. And I, I don't think it's in our budget. The archive's not in our budget because this project's being funded entirely outside of our budget. It's half funded by Young Canada Works and half funded by that private donation. So it doesn't actually affect our budget. And the reason we're doing it is because Tom donated those research papers to us. And so it's our responsibility to look after them. Now, in relationship to the archives in town, we are excited about the possibility of collaborating with them. As you know, we're two completely separate entities with two completely separate boards. So it's not as simple as, you know, carrying boxes back and forth, but it would be in the long-term five-year planning potentially to come up with some more collaborations uh, between archives and museums. So that, as you say, we're not duplicating services and each institution is delivering exactly what they should within the realm of those practices. Um, does that make sense? Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. And Council, any other questions? Councillor Taylor. Get back to the visitors. When do most of your visitors come? When fair, do they most come? Was fair to say like the summer? July and August was busy. Uh, but it also depends, right? So we have tourists coming in May, June, it starts to rise. July and August is busy, and then they drop right off in September. But winter is the time for Hinton locals. Um, oh. As you saw in your package, you know, 400 school kids descended on me in the month of June. Um, and I would hope that as we continue to pick up after COVID, the museum can continue to be a hub for locals so that our visitor numbers will stay steadier, but the people are coming for different places. Okay. Yeah, but the tourist season is definitely July and August. Okay. So I do have a couple of comments. My six grandkids were able to go to the museum during the summer and they enjoyed it immensely. And I wanted to ask, how did Saturday night go with the uh, paranormal the ghosts that Paranormal event, uh, the ghosts were out. Uh, the visitors <laughs> were not so much. So that event was a little, um, it was a little last minute on my part, like that's a planning failure. And so we had a relatively small number of visitors. However, it meant a really fun experience for everyone because they could go around on a personal tour with a paranormal expert who came from Edson and everybody, you know, traveled in one group and was sharing ideas of sharing equipment and enjoying themselves in that way. And they said they saw a lot of activity. I was hiding behind the front desk. Even though, so I don't really know <laughs> exactly what they saw. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very, very much, Margaret, for your presentation. And thank you, Marge and Perry and Joan for supporting Margaret on this. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> so, Council, anything more before we move on to our next presentation? Our next presentation is the Civic Partnership Presentation, Pathway to the Park, and it will be presented by Mr. Garth Griffiths. And on the agenda, it's page 67 to 79. Slide. <laughs> I'm not as good as these other two. Right? Okay. 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 <laughs> what do you do? I get fair though. It's like that. Buster was like last meeting. He did. He literally created birds. He's a good guy. Good afternoon. Uh, Can you give us the names of the shirt? Sure. 
Um, first of all, we invite Mar and Mark Story. Uh, they're both on our board. Um, and Stuart Tannen is also a representative on, on the town of the park as well. Um, you guys have all got this all this information ahead of time, right? So we can just quickly go through it if you want, just as a give you an idea of what kind of questions you'd like to ask. Hopefully we will have it to you. Um, first of all, thank you very much for letting us be here. Um, I, I want to say that the pathway to the park has been an extremely exciting project for us. Um, we've had some great involvement in it. We've had some fantastic support from, from so many different kinds of groups and people that it's just, it's just been good. So going forward in this thing and explaining to you where we're at today and, and uh, what we hope to accomplish is gonna be, I guess we're going to have in this little conference there. It's um, one of the things that um, it's important to know, and this is why Mike is, and Mike and Mark both have been architects in uh, developing the trail. So, um, I don't know, you want to go through all these slides? <laughs> I hope you think. So, 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 I'm not going to do it that way. We're going to just, we'll try a little differently. Um, I guess a couple of quick points to mention for you, though, is that um, we have just done, we now have the copy of the trail. I think you guys all have a copy of that as well. And it's taken us, we are now about a year old. And uh, it's taken us about a year to get to this point, but we now have a trail, um, a proposed trail. It's not exact. The word is is that we haven't uncovered all so the salad preferred salamander. Alignment. Yeah, <laughs> preferred alignment. We haven't uncovered all the salamanders yet, and the little trees that have, we have to be careful, and the bluebirds and all the rest yet. But we're working on it. So the point is, is that we do have a trail. You know, an idea of a trail that we want to go. Go ahead. Do you want to explain about the trail? Because I think that's amazing. Uh, yeah, I can. Um, so the, the the alignment, the way it goes now, we we start up in behind the by the Ramada, goes kind of around some grazing lake or grazing lace right there by the Ramada. We kind of go around that, come out at the corner of where the the uh, uh, West Ridge Road and Highway 16 intersect. And we're going to go down the highway for about eight kilometers or so. And then it turns and goes up into the Camp One area, uh, the old camp, the old uh, West Fraser Camp One area. Wanders around through that for some time. And then we'll be coming out onto the Kinky Lake and Wild Horse Lakes uh, parks. And then kind of turns and goes down towards the highway and then starts to travel down pipelines and so on until it gets to the park gate or to the park boundary, not to the gate. But we're looking at it's going to be somewhere between 29 to 30 kilometers. But okay, so I'm going to Okay, so do you have any questions about that first? I mean, there's a couple of different categories here. Okay. Thank you. Um, so have you had a discussion with the Department of Highways as far as traveling down the highway for eight kilometers? Yeah. Yeah. There, there we've had a number of conversations with them. There, and there is actually a whole uh, document that they've developed about putting trails within the highway rightaways. And we've looked at what this document tells us we have to do and and move well within the regulations for that. So as a follow-up then, so not on the highway, you're in the right no, way. We're going to be off, away from the That highway. makes me feel better. I thought we were sending wheelchairs no. and strollers <laughs> down the side of the highway. Right. Um, it, it, I don't know if any of you have ever been on seeing there's a trail that goes between Canmore and Banff, mm -hmm. and that follows along the highway. So we're going to do that kind of thing along the highway. As long as you're I forget how many meters it is. As long as you're more than so many meters from the actual pavement itself, you don't need any kind of a barrier. But if there are places where you do have to get closer to the highway, then you have to put up the concrete barriers. But most of what we plan to do will be 
far enough off the highway that we should be fine. And Department of Highways has already said that they are really excited about this trail because they want to get people off the highway. It's it's becoming it's a provincial thing, probably federal, but provincial for sure. The sort of the, the way we've designed it is that we're, we're we're trying to have the part of the trail that's closest to town is going to be the sort of the gentle, you know, thing that the families with the strollers and you know, real novice people are going to ride on for the first 12 kilometers or so. And then it's going to turn and go up into the forest. And then, you know, you might be someone that's going to feel a little more comfortable being in more of a wilderness environment because you will be in some wilderness. Uh, but it'll be exciting for people that are a little more seasoned, shall we say, and comfortable in the wilderness. But there's no really no part of it that's going to be more than about seven or eight kilometers from some kind of road access. So it'll be, uh, you know, it's not going to be like some great long remote uh, wilderness experience. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councillor Haas. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I guess along that line of the trail itself, you know, where are you at with conversations with the Elder County? Because I believe what we are only about a kilometer or so that's going to be in the town of it, and the majority, or pretty much the, the most of it's going to be in Yellowhead County. Uh, where are they at with the feelings about the, the trail system, and have they put any financial skin in the game as well at this point, or are we still, where are we at? Okay, well, the county has agreed in principle to support this trail. They have given us some fund, not a lot at this point, but they are, uh, in principle, they've agreed with this trail completely. Okay, uh, we have to discuss more with them. I think one of the things that they were mainly concerned about is what we were doing with the residents or the leasehold people out there, the leasehors out there. Right. And we've now dealt with that, and so um, we will be talking to the county and, and expressing or showing them what we're planning and, and going after more support from them. But right now, they've agreed. They have agreed in principle to support this trail. So if I may, Madam uh, Chair, to yes, follow sir. up on, um, I'm just looking at on page 78, it talks about uh, the town of Hinton agrees in writing to accept some operating and maintenance costs for our portion of it. it are Yellowhead County also prepared for the maintenance uh, and, and the operating after built that, that amount of, of trail system? That's our plan. Okay. They will. Okay. <laughs> we have, do we have it in writing yet? No. But okay. that's that's part of our job to go down and see them. Yeah. And again, they keep telling us that they are keen on doing this. So I, I just have to assume that you can continue on. But a lot of it, there's a lot of very a lot of things that we couldn't tell until just now. Mm -hmm. like this trail is their biggest concern, of course, is the people who live in the community or live out there. Right. And right. And we and it's our concern too. We don't want to hurt anybody. We don't want to make anybody uncomfortable. And so it's taken us a while to get to this point. We're there. And if so, I may, just to follow up and a comment, because I mean, my understanding is, is that the dollars that we've budgeted for for you guys is kind of that seed money to get what is needed for construction and 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 all the particulars, so that then then Yellowhead County will know. My only is I'm glad you're working on it because I mean that's. It's you know two hundred thousand dollars to get it there. I just don't want to see it stall out because the county then says, "Hey, we're not going to you know operate it or maintain it." That's all. So I, I, I'm happy to hear that those conversations are continuing. I think it's important to to mention that we are now at the stage. I mean, you know, we've we've been through a couple of iterations in this trail and ran into bumps. One of them being issues with grazing leaseholders and their concerns out there and so on. We've, and we've gotten around all of that now uh, and feel comfortable enough that the alignment that we've got can go without too much uh, um, protest from any of those people. Uh, so now what we've done, we've, uh, we've um, engaged a, a project manager and his team are gonna be on the ground, like Gar said, looking for cell manners and birds and whatever. Uh, and we've also engaged McElhaney uh, surveys. So the stage that we're at right now is they, the surveyors have our 
shape file, which is the plan of the trail. Now they are bringing that into the format that's required to get all the approvals from the county, from transport, from AEP, from West Fraser, and indigenous groups, and all the people along this trail that are going to have some kind of want to have some kind of say in it. So that will be an official um, survey report that we hope that we're well, planning is to have it done by the end of November. Once we have that, we can start pushing forward to get the approvals that I mean. Yeah, that's exciting. I mean, it's, you know, it's appropriate to have you guys here in the change rooms here. This is going to be another, you know, it's, it's just not going to happen overnight, obviously. So, but uh, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's so sure. important to understand that this path is going to be huge for, for tourism for this area. I mean, I don't want to sell it to you. I think you guys all know how important this is. It's it's going to be so good for our area. And people have been coming out from the city and northern up all over Alberta coming out. They want to go on these kind of trails. And we got to get it built. We got to get it built quick. Anyway. Just just to give you some term of reference on this, the uh, the trail that goes from Canmore to Banff was built about nine or ten years ago. And they have a counter at the start of the trail. And I've ridden it several times. I think the last time I rode, there was 12 million users have gone over it. And there's also a trail that's probably more similar to ours, a little more of a wilderness uh, event between uh, Indomere and Radium, or not Radium, uh, Fairmount. And uh, we've talked to, we've had a lot of dialogue with those people. And they said that last year, in spite of the pandemic and all the rest of it, they had 65,000 users. So kind of, it's probably, I mean, the Canmore thing is close to Calgary, you know, has a bit of a different demographic, but we've got a lot of people that are going to come with here from Edmonton and all the surrounding countryside. Never mind how much our locals will be able to use this as well. Thank you, sir. Councillor Taylor. I'd like to follow up on one of Councillor Haas's questions, and that's related to the uh, county agreement. And I don't want to prejudge what council is going to do, but I think one of the likely things that might happen would be that any future dollars we might give you might be tied to an agreement with the county. You comment on why that might be fair or unfair, please. My personal feeling is it's unfair. <laughs> but I say unfair in, in, in to answer your question. I mean, I, I really believe the county is going to work with us on this. They they tell us they are. Um, and it's important to have the county and the town getting as partners in this program and this whole thing that we're doing. And we need you guys to help us be leaders in, in getting it accomplished. I, I don't, I hate to have it something, well, we won't do it if they don't do it, or I'm just, I'm going with a positive attitude and the thing saying that we're going to make this work. And for that, we need leadership and we need leadership from the town to, to help us do it. So, I mean, can you guys influence the county to work with us? I mean, we all deal with the county. I live in the county, and I know how difficult it can be sometimes in, in trying to get things accomplished. But if we don't work at it all as a group, it's to the mental act. So does that answer you? Here, well, my follow up would be you I mean, even us giving you construction money, uh, holding that back till you have an agreement, understand maybe planning money. But you think that would be unfair? Construction would be probably. I mean, there's a, there's another whole element to this whole thing that nobody really understands yet, including the Alberta government. But they they formed this thing called the Trails Act back last November, and then they turned around and they started to implement it in February, and they really didn't know how they were going to implement. It. But the the bottom line of it is that all these kinds of trails, and there's a whole huge trail network in this province. It's going to come under the management of the commission government, and there's going to be funding for ongoing maintenance and all that kind of thing that goes along with that. So, you know, we're we're counting on being able to tap into some of that as well. Thanks. Thank it was, you. It was kind of virtually uh, really challenging to even um, until you know your alignment and how you know what how, how long it's going to be, what the infrastructure like parking lots, that kind of stuff. Until we know. Right, kind of what that looks like for now at that point with a clear idea. Uh, it's really hard to even tell anybody what exactly some clarity what the costs are going to be. And uh, 
and uh, you know, Mike mentioned the Alberta government. Um, they're still they've developed an app, but they haven't developed any kind of policy related to that. We're kind of operating in kind of a kind of a gray time in terms of you know, them trying to give us direction on how to apply for this thing. Um, so very on how it felt, what that looked like. Yeah. So uh, it, the partnerships may be, may be able to expand. We don't know that has been done. There's lots of opportunity there. In discussions we've had with the county people, with the different county people, it's all been positive. We have not gotten any negative from the county. So, Garth, did you need to carry on with your presentation? I don't, I'm not sure where we're at. Uh, actually, I, we're just answering questions. I guess maybe the next question would be there's a lot because our time will be up here right away. Is the fact is that we are, what we're asking for is town council to or, uh, council to uh, allocate $50,000 a year for the next two years into the budget to help us um, carry on with our planning and, and, uh, and processes. We have raised right now, and I think it says in there that we've raised, I think it's 113,000 actual money that we have. And that's done by a couple from you. It's also from uh, corporate and also some, from some businesses in, in the engine. Um, we have committed or commitments, I think it's over 200 at this point. Plus, there's lots of people talking about more and more all the time. But talking is always one thing actual getting the money to do it and we're spending it um, we've spent about 65 percent of our money right now we've by hiring this project manager and with mental Haney and, and the rest of the things we've had to do uh, it's we're spending the dollars councilor Haas uh yeah just to clarify because I'm looking at the project asks this town commits a hundred thousand in 2023 and 2024 to the project so what you're saying is is it's a hundred thousand dollars in those two years in total but you're you're looking at fifty thousand dollars each year yeah possible okay so it's not a hundred thousand each year okay thank you thank you sir councillor ostashek uh thank you madam chair so i i had some follow-up questions related to some of the questions were asked earlier regarding operating and maintenance responsibility before I'd be comfortable signing off on that, I need a little bit of information on like what would that entail? If you could answer that, and then and then I likely have a follow up, Madam Chair. Sure. Well, so you know your main your main is it's a paved trail, so you know there's going to be frosties here and there. There's going to be some stuff that you know pavement needs maintenance, so there'll be some of that. It'll need to be swept every year. Uh, you, you know there'll be some bridge repairs and that kind of thing. Um, relating back again to a very similar trail to ours down in the in the Invermere, on the Invermere group, their annual maintenance was about fifty thousand dollars a year. For the whole trail. For the whole trail. Yeah. That includes like long facilities that could have those seconds but uh, thank you all I uh, I actually have a couple. I'll, I'll try and keep them really quick. What's the group's vision for the usage in the winter? Is that is there an expectation that it's plowed? No, uh, more so likely. Uh, well, we might we might plow a couple of kilometers of it, but more so likely is to perhaps uh, set some track for dust mm -hmm. Okay, and then yeah, I just wanted to so uh, they're all related <laughs> what happens in the event and i know we're all thinking positive and we want to see this go ahead and, and succeed but what happens in the event that yellowhead county doesn't want to come to the table in regards to the the maintenance uh, and operating costs because they're i mean their input's pretty significant compared to what the ask is at the town of the town of Hinton is only a kilometer or so that means Yellowhead County is going to be asked to take responsibility for 29 kilometers. Mm -hmm. So what happens if they won't? That's where, I mean, that would be, I mean, chances of that as Garcia are relatively low, but if that happens, I mean, certainly it's gonna be a blow, but hopefully by the end of this year, this whole Trails Act thing will be clearer and that uh, there may be money through that 
Jails Act to me would be that as well. If it becomes part of the provincial, this is where the sort of black one fairy of the Alberta government is, becomes part of the provincial trail system, then there will be money for maintenance and that kind of stuff. So it, I think there's some ways to sort of approach it at the county that's going to be true, but um, it has to sort of get some clarity on what that might be. So we're sort of county on the county guys at this point, but there might be other, other options that we could explore if this doesn't happen. I think it, probably you all know that uh, AEP is no more. That is now they've added tourism into that as well, which we think is a positive thing for us moving forward in this. And, and that's probably tied into some of this whole Trails Act thing as well. You know, it, it's, I, Albert, I really appreciate that question. And we don't know for sure if they're going to, what they're going to do. But until right now, we just finally got they all figured out where, and you know, one of their biggest issues was going to be that they didn't want us going through uh, raising these older people and making people upset. They, we know that. And so that's what Albert and or, uh, Mike and uh, Mark have been working on a lot to, to figure out a different way to make the trail work. So we think we've got a lot, a lot of the answers for the county. We think that they have no real reason not to support it. The county is, they don't do a lot in the western part of the county. So we're kind of hoping that this will be something that they can jump on. And it's, again, it's going to take some persuasion. It's going to take persuasion from all of us to make this work. Is it going to be easy? I, I don't know. I don't even know anything out there. Uh, yeah, it's been early to make it. But to answer your question is, what would happen? Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll come up with something. It's been a... Um... It's been a challenge to get anybody to give us final answers on a lot of this stuff until we get until we have the trail alignment finalized, and now until we have this this official surveyors report that we're getting because the government doesn't want to just take our shape file and say okay this is it. They wanted this official drafted survey document with all the salamander location and everything. And you know, creek crossings and all of the construction that needs to be done as well. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Who knows? It could be a recession. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. So I have um, three questions, and if anyone else comes in queue, I'll I'll stand down. So my first question: You had mentioned washrooms. Is that a washroom typical that we see at the Beaver Boardwalk, or is it a yeah, it's it's a basically a concrete outhouse. It's like it's an outhouse. Uh, it is. A vault, a vault, uh, outhouse, like a vault and toilet. An outhouse. And is that um? Would we see one of them on the thirty kilometers, or how many would we see? Well, there's, we'll have one at the Ramada. Yes. And then probably another one airport. closer to airport, right around the airport road area. And then of course, then there's all the outhouses at uh, Kingy Lake. And a lot of course. And what if part and remember the trail terminates on the up towards the park gate terminate parking with that. And my next question is uh the designated parking lots. So I'm assuming that they would kind of coordinate with the uh, washrooms. Yes. Yes. Okay. My uh third question is how much involvement do you have with our MLA and our MP on this? We have a lot of involvement with our MLA. Um, the, our MP knows about it. Um, we've also been in contact with uh, Minister uh, Bozino, uh, the Tourism Minister for the federal government. He's there, um, met with them about you know, two, three months ago, and they are consistently sending us um, places to go to get funds and, and where there's money available. Um, and they are in total support. Um, I understand uh, Mr. Bosno is coming out here in a month or two, and he's going to be stopping in and we're going to show him around a bit. Um, Mark Wong has definitely been very much involved, in, and uh, he also met with uh, Mr. Mr. Bosno and myself. Good. So, Council, thank you very much. Council, any other questions? And seeing in Mount Hurricane, I want to thank you so much, Mike, Mark, Garth. I think this is very exciting for the community. Very exciting. Did you get your e-bike yet? Yeah. 
I'm sorry, I have not got my invite yet, but I am taking donations from anybody. <laughs> we will be looking for you on the chair. <laughs> the only the one lying Thank on you for all of this presentation it wasn't exactly the most formal way, but hopefully it worked for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Car dealers, it's like shit. So, can also. So, our next um, delegation is going to be the Hinton Municipal Library Board. Our presenter, our presenters are going to be Shannon Schott and Hank Smith, and that is page eight on your agenda. Oh, gosh. <laughs> is this us? Or we? Yeah. You're up. We are up. Wow. Hey, okay. hey, hey, we're just waiting for Jen to set you up there. And just be a second. I haven't met you before. I'll let you. Hello. 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 Uh, with me, I have Hank Smith, our board chair. We also have Jace and Sue, who are also on the library board. Thank you very much. We're eager to hear your presentation. Thank you. Yeah, start. Oh, oh, all right. Um, yeah, so uh, this is our presentation. Um, kick things off. So, um, our library is actually a member of the Yellowhead Regional Library. So, what that means is um, that we're not alone in Alberta. We're actually working with several other libraries across Alberta, sharing resources, sharing information, sharing materials. Um, so to explain what uh, how libraries operate actually as a community hub in the town of Hinton, it's not just the books. Um, it's also um, we have skill and job training resources, local collections and events, social connections and access, reading, writing, and understanding, so literacy in all forms. Uh, health and wellness resources, and then the promotion of local workshops and programs, which I'll be getting into in a couple slides. Um, so I just wanted to jump into a few of the stats um, from our year so far, uh, just to kind of show what we've been working on and to give a little bit of a glimpse into what we'll be working on the next as well. So for 2022, uh, as you can see, our library cards, uh, we're having an increase in our membership. A little bit of a dip throughout the pandemic, of course, but it's great to see that people are actually returning to the library and are excited to uh, get back out there. Uh, we've added over a thousand new items into our collection and intend to keep uh, adding to that as we uh, think about the needs and the concerns about our community, what they're looking for. Uh, I'd like to highlight our Dolly Parton Imagination Library. So what this does, it's, it's actually currently giving uh, 360 Hinton kids under five years old, uh, free books. So every month they're getting a free book, um, and that's in partnership with the Rotary Club, actually. Um, we've already had over 600 kids who graduated from the program, and it's been an enormous resource for our growing families in Hinton. Um, we've opened up our makerspace um, in March. So since then, we've completed approximately 43 different jobs. Um, we've provided access to a sewing machine and an embroidery machine. Um, so this is great um, for families and for kids and adults who might not have uh, access to these uh, technologies otherwise. They're able to, you know, try it out firsthand and create some really cool projects. Um, we've also worked with several other community organizations. We don't operate alone in Hinton, of course, and so we've been happy to make partners with FCFS, 
into kids for success. They come in, you know, a couple times a month and kids get to explore. Uh, the Northern Rockies Museum has been a huge partner for us. I'll get to that uh, for our summer reading club, but that's been an excellent partnership, uh, especially going forward with the archives. Um, we were able to donate over 90 pounds of food to the Hinton Food Bank with our food funds program. Um, so that was an excellent initiative. Um, and we also have been working closely with recent brothers who've been providing a lot of resources for a lot of our programs. Um, so far this year, the library was open for nearly 3,000 hours and over 30,000 items were circulated by our 2,667 patrons. So just to contextualize that, what that means is that there's an average of 10 items that were borrowed uh, for every hour that we were open. Um, and just to jump into some of our programs that we've had this last year, this is a major service that we're offering to our communities, again, more than just books in, uh, in Hinton. So we ran over 200 library programs. That's just so far, we've still got more to go. Um, and that was for all ages. And throughout the pandemic, we really worked on innovating the kinds of programs that we offered. So um, we had in-person programs, but we also had a lot of virtual and take-home programs that were really appreciated as, you know, people had different needs going forward, right? Um, and so with all of that, we had nearly 1,500 participants. So it's really exciting to see people coming back into the library and using their programs. Um, some of the highlights from that, we had, again, the museum. Uh, learned a little bit about trains and train safety. We actually were able to get a couple of employees from CN to come down and talk to the kids. Um, watercolor Idol Craft Nights, Ukrainian Dyed Eggs, Sankey, again, kind of a unique program that not everybody you know, has the resources to do at home. And even making pins for Orange Shirt Day. So that was really fun for the kids to be able to do. Um, for the Summer Reading Club, that was a huge, huge success this year. We ran 40 children's programs throughout July and August. Um, and across these programs, we had 410 participants. 210 of those came from just the museum programs alone. So again, that partnership was a huge success and got people not out just not just to the library, but to the museum again and exploring there. So that was really excellent. Uh, we had 276 people sign up for that, which is an over 300% increase in the last year. Now again, that was a pandemic, so of course a different time, but it's really exciting to see that people were um, looking for something to do over the summer and we're you know, happy to um, get involved in what we were offered. So, and 214 of those people were actually entirely new to the program. Um, and when we asked, you know, what motivated you to bring your child to the summer reading programs, one of our patrons said that it was motivation to sit down with their son, read, uh, it's valuable at their son's age, um, fun to just read with, and with stickers, Oh, Great fun job. to reward him with stickers and a chance to win prizes. There we go. Um, yeah, and so that's just what we've done so far this year, and we've got lots of exciting plans for next year. Yeah. Cool. That's one thing. Good. Welcome, guys. Um, yes, I'm Hank. Um, again, Shannon has been with us for uh, uh, quite some time. She actually worked on a new Annie and then when we uh, were looking, when Annie left, we were looking for a manager. She put her name forward, and and so she's only been with in, in her for less than six months to be the yep. position, right? So again, this is her first run through. I think she does. She's doing a really, really good job. She's getting lots of support, which is uh, something that um, is unique and different this time around. So um, we'll get back to the back to the presentation now. Okay, library support economic development. Next slide, please. Okay, first of all, the plans. What our plan is for the next one? Again, as you guys. This is, always happens. Can you, uh, early literacy is a problem in this town. Getting people to uh, to get uh, to read to their kids or to uh, to do the same sort of things as what we did when we grew up. Right? It is different now, and it's uh, there's too many other things around that they could also be doing. So um, we we did a, a a SWAT a few years ago on this when we did our plan of service, and this was one that stuck out quite a bit. When when uh, we did it, so it's one of our major major things that we are moving forward that we want to continue to uh, do promotion on. It's very very tough, but again, we're getting it's getting better. It's getting more results. People are understanding that literacy is important. Um, Ryan can attest to this. Here, okay. Oh, he's on here. You are. Sorry, see your big head there. Uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. 
<laughs> there goes our aspirin. Okay, moving on. Morning smoking cars, uh, providing space and creative uh, that is uh, for creativity and innovation. That's definitely one of all also our uh, our mandates with our uh, stretch plan. And uh, so basically, yeah, uh, we have the space now. We have the counter space set up. Um, the 3D printer is out there. We're getting use from that. I saw. I went. We had a meeting there on Monday. And I, I asked to go behind the counter and look at all the, the neat things that came off the printer in the last three weeks, because they're all sitting there waiting for their, their, their people that created them to come and pick them up and pay, it, pay for them, right? So, and it was really neat. So everything from D&D &D little symbols to uh, there's this, there's one that you actually had that is a, yeah. a clip for on top of computers. Yeah. Like that. yeah, that was quite neat. And it was a dragon type thing. So again, Again, it's really, really cool to see that being used and uh, and actively used. I plan using it myself someday as soon as I get my boat down from the rafters so I can get a new baler placed on there. It's on that baler. You can't get them anymore. They were built in 1969. But anyways, moving forward. And okay, we also encourage lifelong learning in our communities, developing a plan for an archives. We have and are in discussions with the uh, museum as uh, both the museum director, as well as our library director are pretty good friends. So again, this is something we need to do. We need to come up with a plan for ourselves. We are right now just storing them. We need to make sure that uh, in, the, in the future, uh, being able to access them a little bit better. When I believe this past summer, we did get some people to come through. Uh, some council members did come to the library and they, they got a first hand look of what we have actually in there. So. Again, it's a treasure, and we need to be able to promote that a little bit more within our community. Okay. And of course, we need to add to our staff. But this is probably a, a revolving thing in this in this town with other departments as well. And uh, we hope to uh, also do that within our library setting. Okay. Uh, supporting library communities. If you go to the next one, we actually stole some of your uh, strategic plan that you guys created and see how the library can actually. Uh, help you make those goals um, fulfill. So again, I don't know if I, I'm not, I don't have the time to read them all through you guys, and uh, nor will I, but again, as you can see, we provide lots of, uh, of check marks for, for the areas of the town that, uh, that are in your strategic plan as well, and that part of our uh, mandate as well. So, okay. The next slide is, so we actually asked the patron, uh, uh, what I, I basically said, what do you love about the library? What, why, why do you even need it? Okay, because, uh, and so she wrote this great um, little uh, passage for you guys to read. Okay, um, it's wonderful. Not only did we get one from her today, but if you go on Hint and Rant, rant and Rave today, there's actually two posts that uh, dealt with uh, the library and, uh, and and showed us in a, in a fabulous light because with rant and rave, you never know what you're gonna get, but it was a rave and for both of those. So I, I recommend that you guys read those during your time and, uh, so, and to see that we actually are a viable to the community that we represent. Okay, now comes the budget numbers, guys. Um, you guys have the full form what we got, I believe, uh, in, your, in your package as well. So I didn't think that we needed to put all those little numbers on the slide other than what we were asking for, okay? Um, the big asterisks there saying from library reserves, three years ago, we actually came in front of council saying we had some extra money. And we asked uh, also the finance department at that time, how would we like to, how would you like to have this money? And uh, at that time, Carla Fox state stated that 60,000 over three years would be, would be the best possible option for us. This is the third and final year of that 60,000. Okay, so uh, that's, uh, if you can see, uh, you can see from, from that total, it's $488,304.13. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, thanks very much for, uh, for having us here and uh, any questions or concerns or comments, you're welcome to ask us. Thank you very much, Council. Questions for and Councilor Hollis. Thanks, Shannon and Hank for coming and the rest of the board. Uh, I did have a question yeah. about um, the being the 3,000 hours, 30,000 and 2,600 patrons. That, does that number just 
uh, represent the patrons that have taken out resources? Or does this take into account people that come, through, everyone that comes through the door, but uses computer services and other matters? Um, yeah, that's so that's just patrons that have taken out items. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't even account for all the patrons who have to come in and use our computers, just use the space. Okay. There's also e resources that probably are not also reflected yeah. on this. This is only hard copies of stuff that you can get DVDs, books, CDs. That's it. Yeah. So, so, so I, I, I'm because I mean, we always like number, but do we know like the foot traffic that comes through on a daily basis and and how much? You know, do how many members of our community utilize the the library say within a year? Do we have those stats? Yeah, so we don't have like a tracker at the door or anything like that. But for um, PLSB, I believe we do have to provide um, like a rough estimate of how many people come in. So there'll be like a week every year where we keep track of that, and then we just extrapolate from there. Okay. So I don't have that number right now, but I can definitely get it to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Council. Any follow up? I want to thank you very, very much for your presentation today. Very much. And thank you for attending. Thank you so very much. much. Thank you. And, Council, before we move on to our uh, any more discussion before we move on, um, I'm going to call for a seven minute break before we move on to our reports from the administration. <laughs> 